truly understand our local rocks and fossils of the Cincinnati series, we need to get into our time machine and travel back in time to see what the Cincinnati area would have looked like 450 million years ago during the Ordovician period. At this time, North America as we know it did not exist, and a proto-continent called Laurentia was in play. Most of the eastern and western seaboards had not evolved yet and would be accreted later on throughout geologic history. What we see with Laurentia is that the Cincinnati area was located about 20 degrees south of the equator in the southern hemisphere, as a matter of fact, and Laurentia was tilted predominantly on its side. Its closest neighbors would have been Siberia and Baltica, and there would have been a super land mass called Gondwana that straddled the southern hemisphere and the southern pole. At this time, most of the United States was covered under a warm, tropical, shallow ocean that would have been teeming with a diversity of life a place that you'd probably want to go for a cruise, maybe do a little bit of scuba diving, maybe a little bit of snorkeling to check out the marine life below. When we put our local rocks in this context to understand the types of environments these animals were living in, it helps paleontologists to understand the paleobiology and paleoecology of these organisms. All the rocks that you see driving around the region on the 275 or when you're stuck at the cut in the hill in traffic, these rocks represent the depositional environments that come from the shedding of mountains to the east. To the east we had the rising Appalachian mountain change, a product of a collision of an, a volcanic island arc system known as the Taconics that welded to the eastern side of North America. Erosion of these highlands and transportation of sediments from this erosion would have flooded the shelf at the bottom of our ancient sea. Any animals on the bottom of the sea floor that were in the way and could not move would have been smothered alive by these submarine mud flows. And these submarine mud flows are a pivotal part of our story of how we preserve our specimens in such fantastic style. When we look at these rocks, to tell us a little bit about how these processes occur and the environments within which they do occur, we can see that they are not simply just the limestones and the shales that we are all familiar with staring at while we're stuck on the road in Cincinnati traffic. In fact, they represent a much more complex and dynamic history of seafloor environments. For example, those big thick muds that we see um, in our outcrops or that give us our local landslides are actually a complex interplay of erosion and deposition of sediments over time. If you take a thin section look or a slice through these muds, you can see that there are many textures and subtle patterns occurring at very high resolution. These muds are actually representations of multiple submarine mud flows that have traveled down the slope from our Taconic Mountains into the Cincinnati area to bury animals alive. It's in this way that we understand the depositional environments that these animals lived in and how we have this exceptional preservation in the region.